going away next week and I haven't got an axe. But what I have got is my father's old bill hook. And I thought, well, that'll make a very good axe. So I'm just going to change the handle on it and just use it. It's a bit different, I know, but there you go. Um, handle's well gone, well rotten, woodworm, and it's loose. So what I'm going to do is going to draw around the outline of the shape and then take the handle off. Um, normally, easy, I might just try and get it off now. Just hammer and chisel. Well, what I've done in the past, I just chuck the whole thing in a in a bonfire, and it burns off. Well, that come off easy enough. Hit it with an hammer and chisel, and it snapped it off, and I just pulled it. Um, I've got my outline on my bit of paper. I'm gonna because I've got oven cleaner left from my kerosene lamp. I shall do that. What I've got to do now, straighten that back out again. Because when you put a handle in, you normally fold it and it helps keep the handle on. So I'll just get my claw hammer, straighten out. I might change it. I haven't decided yet. If I do change it, I don't think it's going to be straightforward. I've got an idea brewing in my head and I might do that. But I'll, I'll straighten that first and then I might go up the second hand shop. See if there's anything suitable for what I've got in mind. Just back from the second hand shop, which is just up the road. And they did have something that was appropriate for what I was thinking. Um, I'll show you the bit of wood first. I've picked that up on a building site where I was working. I don't know if the phone's going to do it any justice, but it's an old bit of skirting board. So you've got the ball nose at the top. Chamfered at the bottom, but if you can pick it up, it's like tiger oak. So the stripe goes both ways. So I picked that up, out of the skip actually, because um, I'm making a knife. And I always thought, yeah, scales, when that's all done, linseeded up, that'd look lovely. So got this bit of wood, so that's going to make part of my handle. And the other idea I just had, because my knife's going to have full tang in it, I thought I might put a brass, fake brass tang in my bill hook. So I went at the second hand shop after a bit of brass, letterbox. So I'm going to, there's a pin somewhere, pin there, pull the little pin out. And on the other end, you just pull it and that will release that because that's the only bit that's going to work. So I'm just going to do that a minute and then uh, take it from there. I said I'm just making it up as I go along, but if I do it right, yeah, it's going to be lovely. Didn't really want to come off by pulling it, so I cut it off. I just zipped it through there, through there. Now I've got the flap. Of the letterbox. What I'm going to do next, put mask and tape over the top. I shall stick that on it, draw around it again, cut it out.
To what that's pretty much what we've got at the moment I'll get a disc cutter you know the um, grinding blade next and take it from there I'm gonna give it five minutes it's a bit warm Haven't changed the blade. Better do that a minute. Get too carried away. That's that done. What we've got to do now is mark out where that tang goes. Draw around it. I might nip that last bit off so I can get bit of brass in it. I might cut it there, the metal, this bit, just so I can get a nice bit of brass all the way around it. Cut that part out and on to stage three after that. I've cleaned that bit up just as so the glue sticks to it and I've cut me metal. So I've left a little bit of a gap so the glue can f go in there, flow in there. And now it's time to cut me wood. Pretty much do what I've done with the metal on there. Hopefully I can get two bits out of that bit. Cut it down there, cut it across there. Take it from there really. Well, that's what we got at the moment. Yeah. I haven't stuck them or anything. So we've got two bits of oak skirting board squished between a letterbox. What I've got to do now, I've got to rough this up, same as I've done on this side, just so the glue sticks to it. And I've also got to dig this channel out. Just a little bit. So when I put the hatchet in, it's all flat. Um, I might go a little bit deeper so I can get a bit more glue around it. So my mate left me a Dremel. So I'll give that a go. I've never used that. I've only had it a week. So I'll see what I can do. Well, I had a go at the Dremel. And I put it away again and I went round my brother's and got a chisel. So I done it with a hammer and chisel. Put it out. So I've got to lay that on top of there. Lay that one on top of that one. I'm gonna drill it. One, two, three. And stick it. And then I gotta shape it. When it's all done, I shall slick that through there and get the old bit of metal collar on so time to drill a hole I'm going to drill it and then I'm going to put just cut these off I bought some brass rods from B&Q or a brass rod for me knife so just got that out so I'm going to drill holes in it put them down there after the holes are drilled help it get stuck so I'm going to drill through the brass, stick it, and stick the billock in there later on. 
just so I can shape this bit. So I was going to get this sh that shape, put the metal bit back on there, because I've allowed for it when I was grinding. So, start drilling it. I've only got a hand drill, and I found a drill bit in my bricklaying case. So I was like, happy days. Just got to charge me uh, battery up, because it's been in my radio. So, as soon as I drilled it, I'll get back to you. Well, got them all lined up, and to keep them in line, stuck a load of sellotape around it. So they ain't got much kit. Got me 9.6 Makita, which I use to put out profiles on a building site. Obviously got a hammer, and I had to borrow a chisel. So that roll of sellotape that's going to be my um my voice so let's drill some holes and hopefully in the right place one two three i tried to keep them as upright as i possibly could just by guessing so i just done it over on the wall that's my work wall you know i haven't got a workshop I got a garden table and a wall, so that'll do. It's time to unravel the sellotape, take the pins out, give everything a bit of a sand on the inside so that sticks to it, and then flop it all around, sellotape it back up, and leave it for 24 hours. Start shaping it. Well, that's all ready to go. Sanded the pins, so they're all sanded. Sanded the wood on the inside. Took the burr off that, just with a bit of that sandpaper. Sanded that. Time to put it together. Glue it. Stick the pins in with glue as well and then wrap it all together in sellotape and leave it for 24 hours so that's the next plan that's the glue I'm using because that's the glue I've got so that's why I'm using it I haven't really done any research on this I just bought it for another project didn't use it so I'm gonna use that epoxy resin so yeah that's fine that's fine I'd have probably bought epoxy resin anyway, so that's it. So I'll get it all stuck and I'll show you what it looks like tomorrow. Well, that was it. I had to put the camera down because I got to work pretty quick. But managed to get it in. That cellar tape is as tight as anything. And when you hold it up to the light, you can't see through it. So it should all be coated. So I should leave that overnight. And then take the tape off, start shaping it. And the good thing is I can still get it in there. So, yeah. Leave that overnight. Take the tape off and start shaping it but you know to be quite honest that's only taken i think all in all about two hours so far which ain't bad because i'm making me mind up as i go along as well so very happy it's the following day just taking the cellar tape off it's time to start shaping it Got rasp, bought a foil, it's for somewhere else, but I'm going to use it. Got that for 50p, bargain, up the shambles and devices. Um, sandpaper, harsh sandpaper out of a belt sander. And I've also got star of the show, it's my disc car with. One of those blades on it, whatever it's called. Um, he's pretty worn out now. 
I don't know if I'll get through any of it, but I'll give it a go. And then, yeah, shaping and sanding. Oh, that's the outline done. So, it should be the same size. Now I've just got to do the profile. So I draw around that. Start rasping. Should have gone to devices. Definitely should have gone to devices and bought a sanding disc. After rasping with this for two hours, I've got that shape and I've got so much material to come off yet. So I did go to devices. I bought this, which is for brickwork. It's like a carbide tungsten thing that you sand things off. Well, I thought that's a motorized version of me rasp. And if that don't work, sanding hook and loop sanding disc with 10 uh, 60 grit things, whatever they're called. Um, so let me give that a go first because I ain't rasping anymore. A couple of hours, nah. Let's get mechanical with it. So time to start on again. That works. That works too well. Crikey. I should be gentle with that. Right, on with it. Gonna take many minutes just be very very careful with it it's got more bite than jaws that one has in hindsight I should have recorded that because that whipped that off in five minutes so I'm gonna stop using that I'm gonna put this on Start shaping it a bit gentle, because that, that's the business. Unbelievable. And when you use it, pull it towards you and use that that part of it. So move it like that. Otherwise, it gets a bit jumpy. So just pull it towards you and keep moving that in your other hand. Do that. Just started raining, so I've had to move base of operations from my normal workstation to my undercover station. Very sorry, you missed the sanding process. I did press record, well I think I did. Um, after using the sanding disc, I had 80 grit and I had to jump from 80 grit to 800 grit because that's all I had. So that's it so far. What I'm going to do now, I've drew a line on my handle 
drawn a line on this somewhere. There it is. There it is. There it is. Plop it in there. To get it flat, draw a pencil line. And I'm just going to cut it with that, get a nice square, make sure it fits. And then with the epoxy resin, I'm going to fire it in there so I can get down in there. Cover that in there. Squidge it in. Wipe it off. Leave it to set. And then it'll be boiled linseed and finish. Well, I've just mix this up. I ain't going to use that syringe. Ugh. Don't get any on the handle. Ugh. it like honey if you do get on the handle I'll sand it again oh I've got enough Maybe pour the inside first and then do the outside. Makes more sense then. Mm -hmm. oh. Have I got another tube of this? I think I might have. Oh, don't drop that. No. I can't do it how I want to do it. Because it's too fragile. Ah. But I don't really care if I've got too much on it. I'm worried if I ain't got enough. Hopefully when I push down it'll all squidge out. That's the plan anyway. And I'm sticking to it. Ooh. Oh please please enough, please please please. Hopefully there's enough in the handle to do it. Everything's coated. That's the other. Uh, don't get in no, Don't wear your Sunday best. Oh, there is enough. Too much. 
la 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 Ugh, what a mess. How am I going to do that? Front of that collar. Right. <clears throat> if in doubt, just <clears throat> grip it and rip it. I'm going to get a cloth. Uh, emergency J cloth. mess about with it. I'm gonna stand it up. And then let it just dry. Must be a bit of gaff in That's it. Stand it up. I'm standing up in my airing cupboard. Let it dry and take it for now. <coughs> After epoxying the handle on, I have to wait. I don't know, wait. Two days, I think. Um, give it a quick sand, get the excess resin off. Wouldn't much, to be quite honest. I was quite exact with it. And then I've left it in my linseed oil overnight. So hopefully, it'll look lovely. Let's have a look. Ooh. Oh, you think this fluid? I don't know if it could be that much drippage. It does look nice. See what that looks like when he's dry. I'll put <coughs> show the camera. So I'll give him a, another rub, and then I got to decide. I'm going to do anything with the blade or not. I don't think I will. I might give her a little polish. Just just the uh, that bit. I said it was my father's and I don't want to ruin it. So I have to wait for that handle to dry off and I'll give it a polish and I'll come back to you when he's all done. I said there's only going to be a, a file or I might even get my grinder out just to take that little bit off. I might put a little bit of vegetable oil, a bit of um, olive oil on the blade, just to make it look nice. And that's him. And that's all done. Well, this thing had a bit of a pump in it just there, so I just filed it flat. And now, just tickling it with a file.
Ooh, that's different doing it the other side. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Very odd. Very odd is a better way of doing that. I'll go do this side first. That's easy. Quick recap on what I've done. Got me handle, split it in half, and when I said I used a hammer and chisel, I'm a bricklayer. Two inch bolster and me lump hammer. Split that, because I had this skirting board, and I wanted to use it, it's too thin to do it in one, so I've had to stick it together. Um, and to match the knife, I thought, well, if I've got to stick it together, I'll stick a bit of summit in it. And then I happened to find the letterbox, which was nice stick it together a couple of brass rods done uh i always wanted to put the handle on your dad's bill hook but didn't think it was going to be as posh as that but it was good practice for when i do my knife and when i started this project i didn't have an axe but i found an axe well an axe head another bargain 50p I don't particularly like it. It's awfully small, as you can see. You know, it's, um, that's my two-inch bolster. So, three inches. Too small, and I don't like the shape of it. But, if I cut it across there, cut it across there, I like that. I don't mind that shape. And as I've got the wood, I thought, do it again. Cut two bits, <clears throat> cut it in half, like that, stick them together. I'm going to put three pins in it because I was thinking Andy Dufresne, Rockhammer, Shawshank Redemption. I had a quick look at it because I thought he's got pins in that hammer and he did have three pins, three pins in it. So I thought, yep, I'm going to do a homage to Andy Dufresne's Rockhammer. And what it's all about is that. Started that whilst it, while I was at work with my disc cutter. A lot of things that's all you need is a disc cutter. Cut it out, cut it to shape. My brother put the, the bevel on. So, brother done that. But as for everything else, that's just a disc cutter. So, Get that finished obviously i gotta put it for a heat you got i gotta forge it really you know get it tempered and get it heat treated and everything like that so i'm gonna do that in the winter because my brother's got a rayburn and we're gonna get that fired right up so but as for the next one it's that so let's have a look at this uh finished chop saw not chop saw what i'm talking about bill hook and that's him. Don't know if the camera picks up. I'll probably have to go back a bit. I only tickled the blade. I didn't do anything with it. I said it was my dad's and I didn't want to ruin it. Which is pretty much what you should bear in mind when you do um, stuff like this, restoring. You think you, you bought an old thing, make it look old, keep it old, and people are wondering what sort of <clears throat> ah! that's the maker on it. I haven't looked it up, don't bother me. But what does it say? A-R-A-D-E-S-02, pack number 189. And there's a marking on there, whichever that means. But, very happy with how it's turned out. So I should be using it, end of the week in the, in the woods. 
and then I might piddle about with that axe. So that might be the next project, whether I video it or not. You've seen this one, so I think my axe ain't going to be no different. Apart from it ain't going to have the uh, the brass fake tang in it. But yeah, well happy. So I hope you enjoyed this, and no matter if you ain't got a workshop full of tools, you can you can find a way. Always a way.